Yo, 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 ladies and lads, what's going on? It's back here. I hope you guys are all doing well. Tekken 8 is finally here, man. I'm so excited to be bringing you guys some content, man. Today's video is going to be on how to get higher ranks online. How, just how generally how you can improve your gameplay. This is something I did in Tekken 7. Now we're doing it again in Tekken 8, man. And just a disclaimer, the... the <laughs> The rank that you see that I have here with Jun is not the actual rank that I achieved. Uh, I've, this is on PC. I only played today for a few hours. Played on PS5 before and I managed to get to that number one spot with Jun Kazama um, before I stopped playing ranked for a little bit um, because I was busy. But yeah, man, guys, enjoy the video and I hope you guys learn from it. All right, tip number one, don't mash. Now, this sounds like an obvious one, but let me get into why this is important. One of the biggest things I guess people killed in the lower ranks is that they're mashing when they're in a disadvantageous position. For example, with Jun, if I do side step 4 into can cans, I'm gonna get counter hit, man, if I try to press buttons in this situation. Have a look. So even though I went for jabs, which are my quickest move, it was not enough. It wasn't fast enough to be able to interrupt my opponent because after the side step 4, I was I was minus 6, which you know, I'll go into a little bit later what this whole minus and plus thing means, but I mean, basically, the general rule is, uh, another general rule is, if you get hit by a move, you generally don't want to be pressing buttons because you're susceptible to being counter hit. So have a look here. I'm going to make Jun do jabs into Magic 4. Now, let's have a look. I get hit. If I try to press any buttons, dude, any button, I'm going to get counter hit by that Magic 4. So this is something that I kind of abuse versus the lower rank players because I know they don't really know where they are in terms of their advantage and disadvantage. So I can use that against them. And this is something that you guys need to be doing as well. And we'll go into that a little bit later. But generally speaking, on defense, you don't want to be pressing buttons when you get hit by a move, right? Because you're probably going to be in a disadvantageous position. Now, have a look and, you know, you might be asking, well, what can I do? Well, have a look and see what we can do. Remember, guys, we're playing a 3D game. We're playing, tech, we're playing Tekken here. So there are multiple options. We can hold back. So hold back and block. We can also sidestep. Remember, this is this, this is Tekken. It's a 3D game. We can sidestep. So have a look. And I actually get a full punish as well. So this is the thing about Tekken as well. We are playing in a game which has three dimensions. We can side, sidestep, sidewalk. We can backdash as well. All of these options are much better than pressing in situations when you get hit. And you saw it in this situation, right? So even though they got the punish, they had the frame advantage. I was able to use the advantage against them by utilizing my movement. So I know when I was learning the game, one of the hardest things for me to understand and wrap my head around was when do I sidestep? When do I, you know, go for these things? Well, I think that a, a general rule and an easy thing to think about is generally when you get hit, or you block a move which might be, you know, um, plus on block or something, then you want to try and sidestep. And sidestepping, obviously, you know, when you get a bit deeper into it, you got to make sure you sidestep the right way because, you know, let's have a look here. If I try to sidestep uh, the other way, if I try to sidestep left, it doesn't work. So have a look again. Sidestep left doesn't work, but sidestep right does. So when we get deeper into the game, we're going to learn which ways you want to sidestep versus certain characters. And in my, in my next videos, uh, when I go over like the anti-tutorial stuff, I'm going to be going over all of that stuff, man. Don't worry. I've got you, man. Now, this brings me beautifully onto the next tip, frame traps. Now, utilizing frame traps are going to make you guys shoot up the ranks. It's so, so important to understand this concept, guys. Uh, for you, those of you who are newer at the game, or even some of you guys that are maybe an intermediate trying to get up there into the higher ranks. I mean, these things are very, very important. Trust me. This might be some of the most important stuff that you hear if you haven't heard of it already. So what are frame traps, man? So every move um, has inbuilt into it um, its startup frames in terms of how fast it is, but also its frame advantage or disadvantage. So as you can see on the left side of my screen, I have the information up. So have a look at the jab. If I do a jab, it says 10 startup frames and a plus one uh, frame advantage. Now, this is very, very valuable information. Now, 10 frames are usually the fastest moves in the game. Uh, if we're not talking about certain things like you know, Yoshimitsu's Flash and some other kind of obscure moves. But generally speaking, everyone's fastest move is 10 frames. That, that information is very, very important. And one of the reasons why it's so important is because if you go for a jab, which is plus, uh, plus one on block, I can go for another jab to basically interrupt any move or most moves that my opponent will throw out so have a look so you see i tried to jab after jun hit, uh, after i blocked the jab 
because I was minus one, I didn't have enough frames in order to interrupt a second jab. And I got counter hit by that. So have a look again. I blocked the jab. I tried to jab again, but I can't because I haven't got the frames for it. So if we can utilize the frames, um, th this is something that can really lead to you guys getting counter hits very, very often. So using our basic math here now that we've learned from frames, if Jin goes for forward forward 1 plus 2, which is a plus 6 move, she can then go for anything up to 15 frames to interrupt my fastest move. So have a look here. I'm going to jab after blocking this, and Jun is going to go for a 15 frame move. And even though a jab is 10 frames, my jab is 10 frames, and hers, her move is 15 frames, because of her frame advantage, she has uh, she's going to win and beat my jab. So have a look. So I got countered by that. I got a huge, huge damage um, taken because I was mashing when I was super, super minus. So being able to utilize the frame system is very important. You see, I was minus six there. So you don't want to be pressing buttons in that situation. But similarly, it is such a great way for you guys to catch to get counter hits. So, you know, hopefully this has been able to maybe help you a little bit to understand the frame system. Utilize it. Something as simple as just like a jab into a jab. You know, um, and even jab on hit. Look how much plus frames I have on a hit. I have plus eight. So I'm allowed to go for a lot of different moves. Uh, sometimes you can go for a move, a, a low. If it's fast enough, a hop kick will not will not work. So utilize the frame system, guys, and abuse it versus the newer players because they will not know what's coming. Alrighty, alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Third tip here, a very obvious one, but don't whiff. Now, this is very, very important, guys. I mean, I think one of the things I guess the newer players killed um, and even people like at a higher rank, you know, is, is whiffing and, and leading their opponent to being able to get an easy whiff punish. You know, like I said many, many years ago in my YouTube video uh, on Tekken 7, we don't want to fight the air, guys. We want to fight our opponent. We don't want to fight the air. The air is our friend. We need the air to breathe. So don't fight the air, man. Now, let's be honest. You know, the reason why we don't want to whiff is because, of course, it's going to lead our opponent to being able to get some big punishes. So let's have Lily go for some crazy stuff. Look at that massive whiff and I get the punish. And of course, I'm going to use Lily as the example here because we all know Lily players love to press buttons. They love to whiff, you know. Um, but of course, playing patiently uh, in the in the face of some players, you know, and just being able to get um, big punishes. I think this is a very easy way to be able to beat some of the lower ranked players because you know they're going to give you um, very, very easy whiffs. Now, if you go to the other end of the spectrum, and we're talking about Knee. Now, I've played against Knee. I've played against Arslan. I've played against these guys. Knee, man, that guy does not give you anything to whiff punish. You know, it not, it's not very easy. You have to force it out of him by backdashing amazingly or sidestepping the perfect timing or something. It, he's not going to make it easy, but people at the lower ranks, guys, I'm telling you, they, they make it easy sometimes, man. You know, um, and I'm going to talk about in the next tip, how you can force your opponents into whipping but uh for now guys you know make sure that at the very least you're making your opponent block your move you know at least block it um and if anything you're gonna whiff just whiff a jab a jab is a really good keep out tool that you can whiff because it has great recovery generally right so if there's anything you're gonna whiff just whiff a jab on keep out but anything bigger than that as you can see from lily throwing out launches and stuff you don't want to be doing that because you're going to leave yourself open to get punished. Alrighty, guys. Tip number four, movement. Now, we all know that the most important thing in Tekken is the movement, man. I mean, we want to be able to utilize the backdash as you guys are seeing here. Look, if I just mash the back button, this is how quick I move back. Now, they actually buffed it, I feel like, in Tekken 8. The um, the, the speed at which you can actually just mash back and go, and go backwards. But if you want to go back a lot quicker then you have to be able to do the backdash cancel. And it's a, it's such an important way, uh, uh, sorry, uh, such an important system to be able to do because you're going to be able to force your opponent to whiff a lot easier if you have faster movement. Now, a great example of someone who has amazing movement that utilizes at the highest level is Ulsan. Ulsan um, from Korea, if you just watch his videos, guys, and you can see that's he will be able to beat people just purely based on his movement, man. Um, both being able to make things whiff, but also the, the forward pressure to be able to, like, you know, get into his opponent's face and just apply a ton of pressure. Um, so, movement with the backdash cancel, the Korean backdash. I'm going to put a, uh, a couple of links on how you can learn that uh, from a couple of very talented YouTubers and players in the description. So, definitely make sure you, that, that you check that out. 
But another um, movement technique that I want to uh, show you guys is is the dash block. So um, something like dashing forward and blocking. Now this is very important because you, sometimes you want to be able to gather information on what your opponent does when you're in their face. So when you're dashing forward um, and then blocking. And many times what I notice at the lower ranks is that if you're dashing forward and blocking, it will force a move out of your opponent and then you're going to be able to whiff punish. So you want to make it you make your, make it look like you're going to go in, pretend as if you're going to go in and attack, but you're not going to actually go in and attack. You're going to dash and you're going to block. And you're going to bl block at a specific range where your whiff punish is going to work perfectly. So this is very important as well, guys. Being able to uh, dash block, back dash, sidewalk at the right time, all of these things are going to really lead you guys to being able to get huge, huge punishment on your opponent. So make sure that your guys are practicing your movement because honestly, it is one of the most, if not the most important thing in Tekken. The back dash cancel, dash blocking, sidestepping, all of this stuff, guys. Make sure that you get it uh, get it down. Alrighty, ladies and lads, the final tip, punishment. Now, this is one of the most important ones by far. Punishing your opponents when they whiff in front of you or when they throw out powerful moves is so important. Do not let your opponents get away with murder. Punishing is one of the things that I think the lower ranked people struggle with the most. It's where they leave a lot of damage on the table. For example, if I block this hop kick, look at the amount of damage that I can get, you know. I can get a lot of damage by blocking certain moves. And if I don't, if I don't block it, they can keep on doing it, keep on doing it until they eventually hit me with one of them. So you want to discourage your opponent from throwing out these launches and powerful moves. And and you definitely have to punish them when you get um when when you get the opportunity to now luckily if we go into um into practice mode options there is punishment training and you can actually turn it on and you know it will it will give you uh, different things that you can punish so let's have a look they're gonna go mid now and it gives you what it is so it tells you what the recommended punishment is bam bam i, got it. I didn't get it that time okay what's it this time oh it's a low okay let's go again mid Bam, bam. There we go. So I blocked the Rage Art and it told me that my punish was down back 1, 1, 1 plus 2. So, yeah, this is something that's going to be very, very important, guys. Use the um, use the Punishment Trainer. Go through that and eventually you're going to be able to learn. But outside of that also, if you go to my replays and tips, you will also be able to watch back your replays and it will do the same thing. Anytime you miss the punish, it will tell you. The game will tell you where you missed the punish and what you could have done in order to get it so uh, if you go to the main menu and go to my replay and tips watch back your footage guys it's so important especially now that you can get back into the game and practice the stuff that you missed out on right so again punishment guys is very very important not only is it important on block but also if they whiff in front of your face you know utilizing the movement that we're learning and punish them anytime they whiff anytime they um they do something punishable even if it's just a jab even if it's just a simple 10 frame jab, something is better than nothing. And I, I really see the lower rank people struggling because they're not punishing anything, right? So if you're new to the game, um, one of the things I feel like you should really work on is going through a character's top 10 moves and just learning how to deal with them. How do I punish it with my character? Can I sidestep them uh, in a certain direction? Like, let's see if we can sidestep um, the hop kick. So, okay, you can sidestep right. And we can sidestep left, so, you know, sidestepping is not an issue. Um, but then what's the best punish? Well, the best punish is upward one, but we have other options too. You can go for back 4-2, that's also a punish, because it's 13 frames. We also have the heat engager, which I can use as well. So, look at this, guys. The amount of pressure I get from just punishing once, because, you know, Jun has very strong punishment, but other characters also have strong punishment. You've got to be able to use it. All right, here we go, guys. Of course, I have to show you a game... And, you know, put these concepts that I was talking about into practice here. Now, we're going to be going up against a Rainer. Purple Rainer. All right, let's get into it, guys. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, we can finally see the frame trap I was talking about. I actually literally showed that same one, right? So, I was plus six into Can Cans. Now, we're just backing off. Oh, nice. Side step. And he's dead. So in that round we just saw, the frame trap working really well, getting me massive damage and then the movement, the sidestep in order to beat the, uh, the move of Reyna. 
Another frame trap. Punish. Okay, side step four again. Let's see what we can do here. Side step four. Oh, the frame trap! Plus six into the 13 frame. Now, that's not a very good combo. It's hard to talk and play at the same time, but... There we go again. So, I'm catching my opponent pressing buttons when they're not supposed to. They're supposed to be blocking, but they're pressing buttons instead. Okay, this time they're blocking, so they're adapting now. We're just going to throw our moves, bro. Bam, bam. Hey. Okay, big damage. We're going to dash block. Now, we have to sidewalk left. There we see the sidewalk. Let's see if I can get another frame trap. Jab, jab, jab. Side step. Oh! I wonder how to punish that, actually. Oh! Side step, no! Punish! Into the frame advantage, into the plus frame. Again. So, I guess you can kind of see a little bit in that situation. Now, he's Vanquisher, so he's kind of. I guess, uh, intermediate, low rank, kind of, but you can kind of see in that situation um, that it made it, it, it was it was helpful to be able to frame trap my opponent. And I'm using utilizing my sidewalks and my movement to try and force Reyna to whiff and getting the punishment. It's a little bit difficult because the connection is not great, but, you know, it works. Punish there, with punish. Plus frames. This time again. Punish. Again. The frame trap working. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, he flashed again. Can you believe it? And look at that, guys. You see? The side step forward with Jun. And I'm going to do my tutorial with Jun very soon. But again, utilizing my plus frames. Uh, I was plus six. I went for a 13 frame um, heat, heat smash. Which completely counted the opponent. Dash block. Dash block. Oh, we got it. We forced him to press a button. He thought that we were going to come in. We utilized the dash forward. He pressed the button and got hit. So much pressure right now. Whoa. Okay, big whiff there. And the punish. Her heat stuff is so, so good. But we're seeing punishment here. Again, punishment into plus frames. You press buttons again, I can't believe it. We're going to do forward, forward on plus two this time. Oh my god, please block. Jab, magic four. Oh no, I think he's given up. <laughs> Alright, GG's, man. <laughs> GG's to the opponent. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys um, to kind of get you onto the right path in, in order to kind of know what you need to work on and how you guys can actually get into the higher ranks. Now, I'm going to call this video how to get higher ranks in Tekken and it's not really clickbait. I mean, I did the same thing in Tekken 7. This is actually the way, you know, it's, it is, you could also call it a way to improve your fundamentals or five tips to, to get better at Tekken. But generally speaking, you know, if you're on that rank grind, uh, these are the things that I've noticed that really, really help you. There's so many actually more things that, you know, uh, Tekken is a deep game. There's other things that you guys can work on as well. But I've kind of narrowed it down to these uh, tips that could, um, kind of broad tips that can help you into, into becoming a much better player. You see that I was playing against a Vanquisher Reyna and just using simple tools like the dash block to force whiffs or the sidewalking in certain situations or... Um, and even uh, the frame traps and the frame traps again I, I'm telling you guys how important it is because even at the vanquisher rank or you, you can go higher up into the ranks and These frame traps are going to just continue to work and they they are used at the highest level, you know um, It does become a mind game at the high high level, but you can see that the, the Reina did not know that um, he or she was in a 
disadvantageous position. They were minus six so many times, you know, they, I had so, so much of a frame advantage and I was able to get pretty much 50% of the health bar of my opponent just because I know that I have the advantage and I can get a counter hit. So every character has these frame traps. Every character has, you know, movement and, and all these different things that you can abuse against your opponent. So try to learn these and, you know, make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel as well because I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos, including uh, my my um, a my anti-character guides and how to beat certain characters, but also how to play certain characters as well. And I'm going to be going over all the frame traps that these characters can, can use and, you know, combos and all that kind of stuff as well, guys. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, please, you know, leave a comment. I read every single comment uh, on, on my videos. And of course, if there's anything that you guys want to see, anything specific, if there's any character that you really just struggle against and you want to know how do I beat this character, let me know because I'm doing hella research and I'm trying to find out all I can about these characters. Of course, I'm a commentator. I need to know these, this stuff anyway, right? But I'm also a competitor as well. So, um, ladies and lads, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you for the next one. Peace.